What's up everyone? So with free agency right around the corner, we just got some more info on one of the Green Bay Packers impending free agents, and that is guard John Runyon, who is looking to earn his first contract after his rookie deal this offseason. Packers starting right guard John Runyon Jr. is set to be an unrestricted free agent and switch his agent to Drew Rosenhaus. Rosenhaus met with the Packers brass in Indianapolis, and there is mutual interest in Runyon remaining a Packer would have to be the right price for for both sides of course so i wanted to give my instant thoughts and reactions to this because if you've been a part of this channel you know how uh we've been hard on john runyon in the entire 2023 season uh i'm a big john runyon fan and supporter in terms of what he's you know given to the green bay packers you know being a late round draft selection coming in basically taking over starting guard right away um and being a solid guard over his, his few seasons in green bay but uh, 2023 was definitely a down year for John Runyon and at a position like guard I just feel like the Packers should make a change there and they already kind of started to do that last season you know later half of the season splitting snaps John Runyon and Sean Ryan their last year two years ago third round selection out of UCLA so it kind of seems like the writing was already on the wall for John Runyon um, he did finish out the season really well in the playoffs I thought he had two of his best games all year in the playoffs but at the end of the day uh john runyon switching his agent to drew rosenhaus if you don't know already uh usually means they're trying to get the most money possible and uh that's likely what john runyon wants to do heading into this free agency and just a matter of would the packers be willing to pay that amount uh, my best guess is no. There's also an article about a week ago on ESPN kind of overlooking some of the impending free agents for the Green Bay Packers, such as Darnell Savage, Keyshawn Nixon, and John Runyon, and what they might cost on the open market. While the Packers liked Runyon's performance on the field and the way he handled the rotation at his position without complaints, they prefer having a less expensive option at right guard. Ryan, entering the third year of his rookie deal, will count only $1.3 million on the 2024 salary cap. The market Market for Runyon, according to the source, is pegged between $4 million and $6 million annually. So right now, at that 4 to $6 million annually, let's just call it $5 million annually, that would put John Runyon at the 10th highest paid right guard. Uh, do I think he's a top 10 right guard? Uh, definitely not. If we bring up John Runyon's PFF profile last year, uh, I can kind of show you what I mean by he had a down year. And again, PFF isn't the end all be all, but a lot of these grades reflect how I felt watching John Runyon and out there every single Sunday. So let's go look at his grades over the years. Drafted in 2020 in that sixth round, uh, rookie season wasn't too hot, but only saw 161 snaps. Where he took that jump was his sophomore season, you know, right into stardom, 1,100 snaps and a 64.6. That is an above average grade, average being 60.0. In 2022, a 62.6. So still slightly above average. Where he took that drop was definitely this year, down to a 56.5. And primarily his problem has been run block. If you look over the seasons, he's never had an average or above average run blocking grade. And the difference between this season and last season and the year before that is the last two seasons before this last one, you know, he was a great pass blocker, a 77.0 pass block in 2022, a 72.0 in 2021. But this year, he was just about average, where it's like John Runyon, that was his game, was pass blocking. You can also see here he allowed his most pressures out of all of these seasons with 22 pressures. He also allowed two sacks six hits, 14 hurries, and he had six penalties. He only had two other penalties in the other three years he's been in the NFL. So six total penalties this year, a pass block efficiency of 97.9, uh, which is also second lowest in his career. You can also see some of the games over the season. It was just inconsistent for John Runyon, right? When you look at run blocking, you can see a lot of grades in the 30s and the 40s, but none of them really great until later in the season. Like I said, he finished out the season well. Uh, Chicago, Dallas, and Sam Fran, he actually graded some of his highest grades all season so you know I commend him for fishing, finishing out the season strong uh, but when you look at pass blocking something that was a strong suit for John Runyon yes he does have some games with some very high pass blocking game uh, grades but there's also some games with very low even lower than some of the run blocking grades we see a 29.9 um, against LA we see a 23.0 against Carolina 29.7 against KC all lower than any of his run blocking grades throughout the season so what once was a strong suit for John Runyon has kind of turned into to an inconsistency at best. At the end of the day, I think the Packers are going to go younger at guard. Whether that's at Sean Ryan starting week one at right guard, I think they're going to add competition, and there's always going to be competition on that offensive line. So through the draft, you know, they've 
options like Christian Haynes, Christian Mahogany, uh, Mason McCormick, Cooper Beebe. There's tons of options at guard. Even someone like Graham Barton yeah, in the first round can definitely play guard as well. This is the Packers' MO, is to add young linemen in the middle rounds, and then they start to compete and maybe turn into a, a future starter. We saw it with Elton Jenkins, David Bakhtiari, Zach Tom, to just name a few of guys you know that are currently on the roster. Um, that's usually the Packers' way. They don't go and offer... Uh, a ton of money yearly to a guy that's been kind of subpar and uh, at this point when they can get someone for cheaper and could eventually end up being better. So overall to me, if the asking price for John running is five to six million dollars and another team offers that, which they might because you know teams are always looking for starting caliber offensive linemen, you should definitely let him walk if you're the Green Bay Packers. Now, if we're talking like three million, maybe four million, just to bring him back in as a depth guy, maybe not as a full-time starter, just you have another guy in that interior um, where you need depth, I, I, I might be on board for that. But anything above that monetary wise, which he will be asking for and which he might get because you know now his agent is Drew Rosenhaus. Um, definitely off the board for me if I'm the Packer. But I want to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, for that monetary value, would you re-sign John Runyon? And overall, what is your thought on John Runyon? Do you think they should even look at potentially bringing him back? But I appreciate you guys coming by to the video. If you could, please leave a like down below. It supports that channel a ton. But I'll catch you on the next one. And as always, go Pack Go!